Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. I hope everybody had a wonderful uh, day today. For those of y'all who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms. Whenever God gives me a word to share, I come on and I share it with you. For those of you who watch me on a regular basis, you are saying, what is going on with her? She does not sound right, and this is not her normal introduction. No, it's not. I'm just getting over a cold. Um, on Monday, I started off talking about being born again, and then Monday night, I got molly whopped for those of y'all who know what that means i got molly whopped with a cold so i have been uh sick i've been sick a little bit and i just got up and out today i tried to record this message this morning uh but every time i get ready to record it i get a coughing spell but i tell you what i would not be defeated so i came home this evening from work and i am going to re-record this message over and over and over again until it comes out just right for you so happy thursday everybody really quick I want to talk to you from the topic of the role of salvation in the process of being born again. The role of salvation in the process of being born again. What does it mean to be saved? What it means to be saved is essentially salvation for your soul. Whereas if you didn't uh, make these the decision to be saved, if you didn't make the decision for salvation, if you didn't choose salvation, your soul would be lost, right? But because you make the decision to be saved, guess what? Your soul now has salvation and your soul has been saved from the consequences of sin. And this salvation can only come through Jesus Christ. That is essentially the definition of salvation. Salvation is essentially what we call being saved. Why am I talking about being born again? Let me give you the scripture. Turn with me in your Bibles to John, the third chapter. I'm going to start from the first verse. I'm reading from the NIV. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, he goes into more detail after them, but today I just want to stop right there. Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, listen, I'm seeing what you're doing. I hear you talking about the kingdom of God. Listen, I want to know how can I access these things? Clearly you have God with you because if you didn't have God with you, there's no way you could do the things that you do. How can I access the kingdom of God? How can I find, how can I enter? What do I need to do? Now, now listen, he was a religious a leader already, but Nicodemus said, listen, I know I'm a religious leader over here in this stuff, but what you got is the real deal is what he said to Jesus. And I want to know how can I access that? And Jesus replied to Nicodemus and told Nicodemus, listen, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And so I want to talk about that today because Nicodemus had a question. Nicodemus wanted to break it down and make sure he had a good understanding. Nicodemus came back and asked Jesus, how can I be born again? Am I supposed to uh, go dig my mama up essentially from the grave? I ask her to take me back in so I can come back out and be born again. Jesus said, absolutely not. We'll get to that at a later day. But right now, I want to talk about being saved and the role of salvation in the process of being born again. Because we all hear about the kingdom. We all hear about the kingdom and we want to know how, just like Nicodemus, how can we get into the kingdom? Jesus said, you can't see the kingdom unless you are born again. And so many people will say, well, I'm saved. Does that mean I'm born again? No, it does not. And that's what I want to talk about today. Salvation and being saved is a vital part of being born again. But just because you are saved does not mean that you have been born again. Today, I just want to talk about salvation, being saved. What is that? To be saved is a decision, right? To be saved is a choice. When you are saved, what you are doing is proclaiming, professing 
your belief in Jesus. You are accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord. You are accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord. And not only are you accepting that in your heart, not only are you making the decision to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, but you are also professing it and making it clear from your mouth that you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. And not only do you believe in him, you believe that he died and he rose again on the third day. This is what it means to be saved. Why is being saved important? Being saved is important because you can't even access God unless you come through Jesus. Many people will say, I don't have to believe in Jesus because I can just pray to God. I don't have to necessarily believe in your Jesus. Well, that's not scripture. Let me give you what scripture says. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles First of all, to Romans, the 10th chapter. Hold on one second. Turn with me in your Bibles to Romans, the 10th chapter. Go down with me to the ninth verse. We're going to define biblically what being saved is. Romans, the 10th chapter, the ninth verse. And now this is the NIV. And it says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is the biblical definition of being saved is that you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and doing that and making the decision to believe and proclaim by doing so you will be saved. Let me give you the King James version. The King James version reads that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. To be saved essentially is making a decision that you are going to accept Jesus. And that is a good step to make. Why? Because you can't access the things of God. You can't get to God unless you go through Jesus. Now, let me give you that in scripture. Turn with me in your Bibles to John, the 14th chapter. I'm going to go down. I'm going to start at the fifth verse, John, the 14th chapter and the fifth verse. And it reads, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Let me give you that again. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father, which is God, except through me. I know some of these other sects and other religions will tell you that you don't have to believe in Jesus to get to God, but do not be deceived. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And according to the Bible that we believe in, according to God's word that we believe in, and according to what the scripture says, guess what it says? It says that the only way that you can get to God the Father is through Jesus. So being saved is a vital step in the process of being born again because ultimately as children of God, we all want to access the kingdom of God. And how can we access the kingdom of God if we can't access God? And we can't access God unless we go through Jesus. And we can't accept Jesus unless we are saved. So salvation is important because by being saved, we are making a decision to accept Jesus. We're making a decision to believe and proclaim Jesus that he died, he was crucified, and he rose again on the third day, right? We accept and believe him as our Lord, Jesus Christ. And in doing so, we have made a decision to be saved. So that is the role of salvation in the process of being born again. It's an important step. It's a fundamental step. As a matter of fact, it is the first step because you can't get to Jesus. You can't even call on him. And that scripture, let me give you that. <clears throat> Turn with me. I believe that's in Romans. Hold on. Let me give it all to you in scripture. Here we go. Go with me, Romans, the 10th chapter, where we were just reading 
Um, Romans 10, let's go down to nine. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised them from the dead, you will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? So if you don't believe in Jesus, you can't call on him. And if you don't call, if you can't call on Jesus and if you don't believe in him, you can't even uh, get to God because Jesus said that he is the only way. So salvation and being saved plays a fundamental part in the process of being born again. But just because you are saved does not mean that you are born again. I hope that makes sense to you. So let me wrap this up for you really quick. What we have talked about today, being saved, right? Is believing in Jesus, right? Being saved is a decision to choose Jesus and accept Jesus, accept him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to believe, proclaim, and profess that he did die and rose again on the third day. Being saved is the only way that you can access God because being saved is accepting Jesus and you can't get to God unless you go through Jesus and you can't call on Jesus unless you believe in him and you are saved, right? <clears throat> being saved means that you have chosen Jesus. It means that you believe in him. It means that you are accepting him as your Lord and your savior. And because of that, you can now access God. The ultimate goal for us as children of God is to access the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God here on earth, right? That is the ultimate goal. That is the ideal thing for us. That is the end goal for us. It's not to die and get to heaven. God wants his kingdom in heaven to come here on earth. And so while we are here on earth, our goal is to access and enter the kingdom of God. Jesus said, you can't get, you can't see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. And you can't be born again unless you are saved. I love you. I am Grace Amber. Happy Thursday. I'm glad I got this word out. Trust me, I have tried about 15 times literally today to get this word out, but I was not going to stop until you got it. Now I'm going to come right back tomorrow with another word. Tomorrow we are going to talk about supernatural conception tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to talk about the supernatural conception that takes place in the process of being born again. I encourage you that if this is going way over your head and it's making absolutely no sense to you, if the way that I am explaining it to you is not coming through clear for you, what I suggest you do is go YouTube Dr. Miles Monroe. The official channel is Monroe Global. Go look up Miles Monroe, Dr. Miles Monroe, and he has a playlist on his channel. It says Kingdom Teachings. If what I am saying to you is not making sense, or if you want to learn more in depth, Dr. Miles Monroe has about a hundred and something videos up there talking about the kingdom. And trust me, nobody can break down the kingdom like Dr. Miles Monroe. So listen, I love you. I am Grace Amber. I will be right back on tomorrow with another word.